I have used the Armada ARV-116JJ for the past four years. This will be my fifth season of using the ARV lineup, specifically the 116 underfoot. And it wasn't until last year where I started to venture into various skis within the Armada family. Because I loved the 116 so much, I felt like that ski really progressed my riding, increased my confidence, and just all around um, enabled me to have a lot of fun in the mountain. I wanted to see if I could take those characteristics that are found in the 116 and just put them into a little bit of a smaller platform that might be more versatile for daily ski use. If you only have the option to purchase one pair of skis for this upcoming season, which is the reality for most people, does the 106 kind of fit in to be the perfect one ski quiver or are there other options or better options out there for you? Before we get into it, real quick, back up. I am in no way sponsored by Armada. I get this question quite a lot. I have paid for all of these skis with my own money. Now let's get into it. The Armada ARV 106 is actually a very stiff ski, and I think this can be confused because the ski is stiff, some people might not associate it with it being playful. But the 106 has what's called an AR freestyle rocker. This means that the tips and tails are rockered, but in the middle of the ski, it has negative camber. So it's rocker, camber, rocker, which is a very common design nowadays. But what this allows you to do is because the inside of the ski, essentially when it's unweighted, it's not together, if that makes sense. When you put weight on it and you start to edge on it, it gives you maximum grip and control when on hard pack and groomers, it gives you maximum edge contact. But because you have the rocker tip and tail, it gives you extra flotation. It gives you a little bit extra forgiveness and soft snow, which makes it versatile for both a powder ski and a groomer ski. Another cool feature of the tips and tails is the smear tech. This is like a 3D sort of bevel on the tips and tails. That's kind of hard to see on camera, but this just makes it a little bit easier to maneuver some of that crud and soft snow. It almost acts like a self-centering mechanism and it just makes it very unlikely for you to catch an edge on the tips and tails. So when you're on takeoff or landing, stuff like that, it really leads to one of the aspects of even though the ski is a little bit stiffer, it still is a very playful ski, which I'll get into in a little bit later. Honestly, I don't think I can go back to a ski that has an edge all the way up the ski. It just makes it so I can have so much fun on the ski, nose butter around, tail butter around, and just kind of have almost like this surfy, like just flow and vibe to my skis where sometimes um, like the ARG twos here that have an edge all the way up, you gotta be a little bit more mindful of kind of where you're at with the ski, if that makes sense. But when I say it's an edgeless tip and tail, 75% of the ski still has a reinforced edge and sidewall to it. So for the most part, right underneath the binding area where a lot of the weight distribution is, especially if you hit a rock or something like that, the sidewall and edge is very, very beefed up. But then as it kind of goes down the length of the ski in front of the toe piece, the heel bind, the heel piece, stuff like that, um, you'll start to see it, it kind of gradually gets thinner and thinner till kind of right at the edge, right towards where that rocker really starts to begin, the edge kind of just disappears and it's just a, just like the actual wood and the laminate of the ski. So for the most part, the actual effective part of the ski has an edge, but it just gives it so the areas that you don't really need an edge, you don't have one but it's because of this reinforced sidewall and edge that makes the ski very, very resilient. I am in no way easy on my equipment or kind of mindful of where I ski because I, I just feel like the ski needs to be the tool and be able to sort of get us through situations that we find ourselves in on the mountain. And I've never really had an issue where I've completely destroyed an edge or something like that. And I do a lot of this in part of this reinforced edge and sidewall. Lastly, and perhaps one of the biggest differences with the ARV lineup and some of the other stuff that Armada offers is what the ski is actually made out of. This is the Poplar Ash Core. There is no metal or carbon in the ski at all. It is entirely wood. It's primarily made of poplar, which is a soft wood, but it's not the softest and lightest out there compared to something like the Karuba Core, which is found in the UL versions in the White Walker, for instance. But it has mostly made of poplar, but it has like these ash stringers which go longitudinally down the ski as support. Ash is a little bit of a more dense, stronger wood than the poplar. So it's kind of this like reinforcement mechanism that they use to have an all wood ski, but not have to put any sort of metal in it to help reinforce it. I really love all wooded skis because I feel like that's what really makes a ski lively and vibrant. I feel like sometimes when you have metal in the ski, it can kind of dull it down a little bit and sort of make it damp. Now there's trade-offs to, to both, obviously. Again, it's the poplar ash sort of combination that albeit the ski is stiff, it still is very, very playful. 
Before we get into my experience with the ARV 106, I wanna talk about the playfulness of the ski because I think a very common misconception is that if a ski is stiff, it is not playful. And for a ski to be playful, it needs to be soft. When trying to define what it means for a ski to be playful, I think it's it's two things. One, it's, it's the ability to be able to build energy in the ski. I think one of the ways you get the skis to work the way you you want them to is by building up a lot of energy or momentum in the ski, releasing that, using that sort of weightlessness to transfer the weight and then rebuild the energy. So for a ski to be playful, I think it needs to be able to absorb and release energy quickly and, and build it up rapidly as well. And I think that's where the all wood ski uh, makes a lot of sense. Secondly, I think it needs to be able to release from a turn and initiate a turn very quickly for a ski to be playful. That's where the rocker profile comes in to play a lot because you have the rocker tips and tails and, and you actually don't have any effective edge there. It's really easy to get the ski to turn. With a larger underfoot and a longer ski, it's positively correlated with the turning radius. So a ski like this, the 106, in the 188 centimeter version, the turning radius is around like 20 meters, which I would say is pretty, it's just like average. It's not short, it's not long, but it's what you would expect with a 106 like this. So I guess I just kind of wanted to be clear that even though the ski is stiff, it doesn't mean it's not playful. And for me personally, I would rather have a little bit stiffer of a ski because I feel like I generate a little bit more power. So I think too soft of a ski for me would just feel like I'm kind of falling over on the ski. So the fact that I have a very stiff, stable platform, but still have these characteristics that keep it playful, just makes it really, I think the right ski for me. Honestly, last season was so epic in terms of snowfall that I honestly found myself mostly with a 116 or the 121 or even the 133. But I did use the 106 a good amount of times, handful, maybe even about seven or 10 times. And I feel like I got a pretty good read on it in different conditions from groomer days to some like the Pacific Northwest, like icy sleet sort of stuff, right into some powder days, six, seven inches, just sort of boot top sort of stuff. I think for me, one of the things I noticed is the less rocker profile. I think sometimes when I got into a lot more chunder or some of the like some of the, the deeper snow, the powder, I did feel like sometimes the tips wanted to dive down a bit more where I was kind of used to a bit more rocker and just sort of wider underfoot to kind of keep me afloat. But on the flip side of that, I felt like I could really get the skis to dive and work and dig a lot more than a 116. It was just so much easier for me to transfer the edge, way easier for me to actually carve the ski I felt like. And at the end of the day, just easier for me to maneuver and put the ski where I wanted to. I feel like with the bigger skis that I use, Use, I need to allow myself a little bit more time to initiate the turn, release the turn, and just prepare for the skis like inputs, if that makes sense. Or when I make the input mentally, I need to like almost wait as a little bit of a lag time. Where with the 106, it was way more instantaneous. Like I thought I needed to do something and it was already happening. And that's just, again, due to the geometry and the smaller underfoot of the ski. I guess the, the place where I wouldn't necessarily reach for the 106 is in a powder day. Once you start to get over like 10, 12 inches, stuff like that, I would prefer something like a 116 just because of the more flotation, the bigger sort of surface area underneath your foot and just the naturally bigger rocker that comes with a powder ski. But would that be being said, it doesn't mean that you couldn't still have a hell of a day on a 106 in a deep powder day. It's just uh, me personally, if I had the option, once I started to get into those bigger snow storm totals, I think a bigger ski would be the right call. Now, after watching this, if you're just like, I really want a soft ski, I just, you know, I'm not, I'm not as strong or powerful to really get the ski to work the way I want. Armada actually created the ARW 106 UL, which is the, honestly, it's the same exact ski. They made it in large sizes. It goes all the way up to 188. So it's really by no means a female version of this ski. It's just made of the Karuba core. Everything else is identical. So the Karuba core is a lot softer. So if you really want something that is from a flex perspective, softer, a little bit more lightweight, you could opt for the ARW version of the 106 in the same sizes, you can get this in a 188 and an ARW if you're, if you're, you know, I'm, I'm 5'10 using the 188. Also new this year, they came out with the Armada X Oyuki 106 UL, I might be uh, mispronouncing that, but not only is the top sheet absolutely beautiful, it is made of the Karuba core. It's honestly just like the ARW. The only other difference is that the actual sidewall on the edges is a little bit different. It's this new edge wall 
construction, which I just, I've never used, I haven't seen it. So I don't, I can't really speak too much about it, but if you're looking for a UL Krubacore type ski, that is another option. It's a bit more expensive because it's like a limited edition type ski, but it would definitely lead to a softer ski and uh, could be another great option for the 106. I think one of the biggest differences between this ski and like the Armada Declivity, for instance, is that whole geometry and what the ski's made out of. The Declivity doesn't have that same freestyle rocker. Like the tips and tails aren't, they aren't completely rockered. So you would find a lot different sort of um, ski style, largely just in, if you're doing any sort of freestyle riding, going switch, anything like that. These are full twin tips. And also something like the Declivity has metal in it, which is gonna be much more rigid, a little bit more um, stable at high speeds, stuff like that. Other very similar skis out there on the market is something like the Atomic Ben Chetler. It's honestly almost the same ski, just from a, a geometry standpoint, the edgeless tips and tails, it's very, very similar. I think one of the, the biggest things is just sort of the size of the underfoot. This fits right in the middle of what the Ben Chetler's offered. So if you think 100 is too small and 110 is too big, you know, this fits right in the middle there. But I know the Dina Star M Free 108 is another very similar type all mountain, playful freestyle ski. And also same with the Black Crow Atris 105. I've never used any of those, but I was just trying to give you guys some other comparisons to if this kind of sounds what you're looking for, but you're not sure if you're totally sold, those are some other options you could try and demo out as well to kind of get you in the same bar ballpark, so. To wrap this up, I think this ski is for anyone who honestly likes to do a little bit of everything. Someone who wants to have the ability to do a few park laps at the end of the day. Someone who also wants to be able to enjoy some of like those morning crispy groomers, but also be able to go up to the upper mountain stuff, do some cliffs or, or whatever it is, but also be able to take the skis out on a powder day and just not have to worry about kind of what's underneath. I think if you're someone who really, really enjoys carving and laying down arcs, dragon knuckles, I don't think this is the right ski for you just because of that the rocker profile, the all wood stuff like that. But if you're someone who's kind of like a hybrid, Maybe you grew up as a park skier or you know you like this you like to ski out of park now, but whatever. I think this could be a good option for you. I do encourage you guys to demo it and try it for sure because like I mentioned, it can feel very stiff at first. And I think um, it takes a little bit of getting used to to figure out how to get the ski to work the way you want it to. But like I mentioned, just because the ski is stiff does not mean that it is not playful. So I am not very adept when it comes to ski knowledge from geometry, all that sort of stuff. I'm really someone who just knows what I like and I just go out and use the gear, but I'm not super gear knowledgeable. So if I made a mistake, I apologize. I tried to just share my opinion on the ski because I know we're getting that time of year where it's kind of time to uh, to get some new twigs. So this is the 2023 version, but honestly the 2023 and the 2024 version are identical. It's just um, difference in the top sheet and bottom sheet. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you thought of the video. I'll see all of you guys in the next episode. Take it easy, man. Peace out. Oh,